final race of the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. We're in Pyeongchang, Korea. The venue, Alpensia Sliding Center, that will host next year's Olympic competitions. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Alongside me, John Morgan, as we get to the final run of the two-man season. And what a dramatic finale it could produce. Well, Oscar's keeper, Manus, and Minkins is brakeman. Well, he's done what he's done all season. He has a great start and good drive. And here he is at the finish line, third place. Looking at picking up his third bronze medal, at least in the season. But here's the guy they're all chasing, Juan and CEO of Korea. These guys chained, trained in secrecy all week. They only took one two-man practice trip to qualify. They've been training at different times. Everybody was looking for their lines because they'd been on the track more than anybody else. And they saw it. He was in second, only had the fifth best start. Surprise. Francisco Friedrich, the four-time world champion, the leader of the World Cup points, Torsten Marcus' break room. They come out with a great start time and a rough ride down the track, but it was fast, fast enough to be the leader after the first run. No big surprise. Well, Francesco Friedrich, the race leader, also the World Cup points leader. He claimed the World Championship last time out in Koenigsee, and he has won in Whistler, in Altenburg, Winterberg, and Eagles in the World Cup. And look at the close groups here. 16 hundreds of a second from ninth to the tie for 20th place. You think this is going to be entertaining? Oh boy, yes. We've got three ties between 21st and 10th alone. From 22nd, Rudy Rinaldi and Ricky Peter on down. They will all join the spectators for this final run of the season. Simone Batazzo pulled out just before the start of the race. Question mark over his four-man race tomorrow. Look at, so. this, look at this facility up top. Third story. There's Johannes Lochner, and look at this running track gym that they have up top of the yep. facility for the athletes to warm up. Everything fully enclosed in the sled working area as well. Lots and lots of space, and of course, this time next year, well, it'll be done, but in February next year, it'll be packed with sleds, all in their Olympic liveries. Great view of the runners there, not square-edged. They're all rounded for minimum friction. That's our big boy Oscars, Bartis. See the, the pit area at the track, and there's Juan, the Korean second place at the moment. He's only got one medal so far this year. This could be his second tonight, and it would thrill the home crowd. So here is your start draw. Last man out, 31st sled, Brad Hall tied to the hundredth of a second. We're Bayard Hefty. They are 20th equal. Hall will go first in a 21 down to one final heat so there'll be 21 sleds in our top 20 in inverted commas last of whom will be the race leader francesco fruchik looking to defend that lead and take the crystal globe in the two-man competition what that will also do is perhaps vault him further up the order in the combined title race which he may well also capture tomorrow Brad Hall and Ben Simons of Great Britain, the first sled in the final heat of the season. This Olympic test event at Pyeongchang in Korea, the Alpensia Sliding Center is the venue for World Cup number eight, the first ever bobsled race in Korea. Well, Brad Hall, last man down, tied to the hundredth of a second with Bayat Hefty. Only had a 501 start. These are two great athletes here. Cold or Shea should get below five here. Five of one again. Now, here comes the tricky part of the track, curve two. He barely gets through there. That's the pivotal part of the track. That's the part of the track that if you don't get through there clean, you have no chance at the bottom. We saw their coach there on the wall watching the exit transition from two to three to see how it looked. Everybody's still busily filming all of these runs, trying to work out what the perfect line is. Out of corner nine, that, that's, that's a really excellent. good run. That's as good as you're going to see. Well, that's what he did in the first heat, and that's where he picked up the speed. But then from 13, over the brow here, he hits the wall, as he did on the last run. And that's where it all went away. He dropped from 12th uphill. to this 20th. Is a big uphill section here. You don't see it on television. Decent speed, 81.8 miles an hour, 50.91. That's a whole hundredth of a second quicker than his previous run. Run. Wow, that's consistency. Yeah, they're all 
expecting too many people coming down get within a hundredth of the premium. I would expect most teams would go faster. Yeah. Now remember, he was the last guy down and the first guy off. So conditions pretty much identical. It was only 25 minutes ago that he was finishing his last run. And take a look at this. You will not see better, better lines than this right here coming through the chicane. It's not a straightaway, it's a bend away. And most of the slides that go in there will be leaping in the air. So uh, we might have teased you the wrong way for the first sled down. Well, sure worth pointing out as well as he goes to leader's box, he was on ice less than half an hour ago. 31st sled out and then first sled down in the second heat. Doesn't give much time to get back to the top for runner prep or for the athletes to get themselves ready. Next up, Baird Hefty. 20th position tied with Brad Hall. And he had start draw number 26. Oftentimes, if you're outside the top 20 start draw, the track is getting chewed up. It's harder and harder as you get the lower numbers start draws to get in. That wasn't the case here. No, there was a uh, advantage for some sleds. We're pretty surprisingly fast. 25th, 26th start draw. But this is the silver medalist from the Sochi Olympics four years ago. Seems like it must have been 10 because this yeah. is not the same start monster. Uh oh, that was a drift. Uh, 504, now watch the next albatross on the track and he gets, gets away. through there. But that is 400s down. Let's see if it cost him at the next clock. Should be six or eight or four. He, so he stopped the bleeding there. And Whoa. Ooh, but he got up in the wood. Yeah, That's very six, late on seven. seven. And this isn't pretty. No. There's not good. Still 400s back. But well, how's he done that? Because that was ugly compared to how Brad Hall got through it. 500s back. This would be a big scout for Brad Hall to pick off. And the hefty uphill section of the needs track. to find Speed. something at the bottom. Can the Swiss sled find the numbers? It does, does just in the end. Yep. Oh, I, I predicted there wouldn't be many ties. And, boy, was I wrong. Yes, yeah. we're learning a lot about the track, Mark. Yes, we are. Everybody is, and we'll be still learning next year when we get to the Winter Games. It will be definitely still a puzzle for a lot of these athletes. They have one more official training week at the pre-season. Well, watch how high he climbs here at seven. That's up near there. And he comes down, centrifugal force brings him back up, and he has to get up here near the woodwork. And, uh, you know, that wasn't the line. There's the woodwork. You'd be the judge. I think he got on Bosh. it. Yeah, you get pushed away. The lip of the wood sticks out over the ice. Bad Hefty, the race leader. Two down. Two sets down. Switzerland's Bad Hefty leads. 19 to go in the final BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup race of the season. Alexander Kazyanov currently leads the four-man standings. But what a woeful time he's having off the back of 19th in the World Championships. He's in 19th place in the final World Cup of the season. That was the worst Russian World Championships in the two men and women's. And the four man wasn't much better. It was a World Championships they want to forget. He finished 19th. Just point out that his start was 28th in a field of 31. Only four sleds started slower than Russia's lead driver. Yeah, that's... That's a big part of his issues. Yeah, I don't, don't disagree. The lines here are not oh. perfect. 127.5, that's the speed though. Yeah. And that's... he's got green numbers because of it. 200s, but this is an experienced driver. Should get down here without a mishap and you look at that perfect in the uphill it's still going uphill and it's a steep uphill section yeah. 50.86 and he's 400s better so the times pretty much equal from first to second heat for this team also and the frustration that he showed when he got out of the sled in the first heat won't have been mitigated by that one either might have been peaking too early what did he do in the first part of the year didn't he I got he got one medal Second in yeah, Altenburg. That's it. But at four man, he was picking off some medals. This skid into 12. Well, we're starting to see what we know. And here's the front part of that curve. Here it is again. Look at the. <laughs> it's not a straight line. He just uh, posted right there. Nope. Look at that. Look at the frustration. A lot of to frustration speak much down here. To understand what he's thinking, do you? 
Part of Alexander Kazinov's frustration is called Alexei Stulnev. Stulnev has pretty much overhauled his senior teammate, not actually in points because he didn't start the season as strongly, but he has become the better of the two in terms of results in the last few weeks of World Cup racing. Yeah, but he finished 17th also at the World Championships. Again, yeah. I think the Russians, I don't know what happened there. They showed up, got their credentials, and... They just were Checked a non-factor there yeah. at that World Championships like I've never seen. The Still there, only three hundreds faster than Kazinov after the first of our two heats. He has another three hundreds with a quicker start. Now we had two events in Kota, so we had the World Cup three weeks before the World Championships. Still there, finished fourth in the two-man. He medaled in the four-man, his first ever medal. He comes out two weeks later at the World Championships and he finishes 17th. So I don't know what water they were drinking, but it wasn't the proper toxin, that's for sure. Five hundredths of a second, gaps coming down. Kazinov probably really not interested in watching this. The difference between 19th and 18th will make very little impact to him. It's very painful, for yeah. sure. And he can feel any chance 50, at combined title drifting away. He can't get out of the Look at the Russian, look at Zubkov there. on the right. He's being kind. They won't be able to get to the airport quickly enough and get this season done with. Yep. And Although they did walk away with a woman's skeleton World Cup medal. Nicotina with a yep. silver medal. And that was the Russians' women's first medal of the season. Yeah. Look at the crowd. First ever event these people have attended. They're making a lot of noise. This is up in seven. He's up in the woodwork also. Yeah. They're getting further Check it and out. further There's a lot of people turn, taking that line, they? but yeah. I, I got to believe hitting the wood is, you know, it's better. Watch this here. Watch the runners here. He comes out really early. Holds look at, it look off. at that. Whoa. That's what we call Robin Hood right there. Yeah. That's in the uphill section, too. That was up to the line, wasn't it? Bruce Tasker and Toby Alubi for Great Britain in 17th position, two hundredths of a second ahead of Alexis Stulnev of Russia, one hundredth behind a tie for 15th spot in this enormously packed top 20. How about the size of the guy in the back? Talk about an enormously packed sled. Watch this huge man trying to get in this bathtub. And look at it. Look at the size of him. He's trying to disappear back there. Got to get down a little bit lower, Toby. Never but mind it's 6'6", 245 pounds. Never mind getting in the sled. Ooh. It's hard enough trying to get him into the minibus to get to the track. Tasker just crushed the wall out of curve two. 2,200 lead relative to the start. That might start to come down. You saw Dominic Scherer, the head coach of the British bobsled operation. Ooh, hi there, right on the corner. Look out. Boy, he had some problems in that seven. Seven's turned into a bit of a nemesis. Ooh. Oh, Bob jumping. Well, he's gone from 1600s up. In fact, it was 2200s up to 700s up. Ooh, and he almost rolled it there. He's going behind Alexei Stulnev. No this speed is what on the bottom. In the first heat. There was no Ooh, speed he's in the He's going to fall two places. Maybe not. No, he does. Five, yeah, five spots. places. And that's how tight it is. He drops right to the tail of the field with a 50.99. He will be 21st. There should be an exit out of curve two when you do bad, like you said, and go right back to the top, have yeah. a chance to do it again. Because yeah. if you hit out of curve two, just turn the lights on. It's over. And we just saw it there. Yeah. And he him did, and it. He did it both fronts. Both losing speed now below look at the frustration. 13. Here it is. That's his coach, too. Yeah, Dominic Sherry going, please don't do oh. this. Doesn't look like much, but it is. And out of nine. Into so there's 10, he hits. He's on the wrong side. Hits. Now, this causes the jump. When he's on the left side, that's where you get the jumping from. And yeah. Look at the friction when the sled comes back down. And this is he's still not over here. This is out of 13, and he's really late out of 13. Look at the sled almost roll yeah. back. Four man sleds have crashed this mm -hmm. week in training there We're with that see, same type of movement. see some real drama in the four man. Alexis Stulnev leads from Alexander Kazianov with 15 sleds to go. Tied 15th, Matthias Luti and Dong Yong Kim of Korea. First up is Luti with teammate Christoph Talkowski on the back brakes. Pretty good drive down the track. Start time, 17th, 5.04. So it's colder. They should have a little bit better start. 
Five all four. This is one of consistent. three ties in the top in the uh, twenty-one to ten position. Can he get out of here? Get out of two, no problem. Let's see if he climbs the wall up near the wood here. No, holds it around. Low, that's high, and then that's pretty good there. Again, like his first run, neat lines, seven hundredths of a second in front of Alexei Stulnev, who he was fast oh, really by nice. three hundredths in the first heat. Back coming off foot surgery in the summer, wouldn't allow him to train. He didn't start getting on ice till December, so he's had a abbreviated season due to health. Gaps down to four It's going to be close, right to the Very hundredth. Very close. Oh, oh, and 1,200s back. The speed wasn't there at the bottom, okay. and that really Finish robs you of positions as you back. crawl uphill compared to your rivals. He just well, saw his in coach. In second place, ahead of Alexander uh, Kazianov. Janis Minnins, his coach, just exited the box there. That was not a bad-looking drive either. I just didn't quite have the speed at the bottom. Well, how do you do here? Not bad. Look That's at that. as good as it gets. Yep. The entry. Okay. They'll be putting this on film. But where you get the pressure on the exit of nine is how you get through that, whatever you want to call it graveyard, bend away, non straightaway, frightening, challenging. Dukes has a takeoff area. Tong Young Kim, a career with Jung Lin Jun, their teammates. Wan and Suk. Lie in and Sio lie in second place. He These should. guys would love to try and ease their way into the top ten, and it was only seven hundreds away from them after the first heat. Well, Koreans sliding on their home track. We've watched them for six years. Ooh, that is a mistake. Let's see if he gets out of curve two. Not really. Two hundreds, that two hundreds, not anymore. He's in the red, and so now he's got to have the perfect lines, which he did on the exit of nine in the first run. Let's see if he can match it again. Late. Whoa, that and might pays be. for it. 127.5 is uh, that'll go that's, from that nine from, to 1800s back in a heartbeat. Oh boy, he's going to drop back yep. again. How many spots? Oh, right, really moment, late out of 1415. At the moment, as the six second best down, speed, he is going to drop to last in the field. He is last wow. in the field. So much for all of that late night training, all of that secrecy, all of that extra track time. Eric Allard, the French coach, coaching the Koreans. Looked on, stunned. And that's how tough this track is, how easy it is to give away time. Frustration. Even the local drivers can't get it right. This should be the frustration zone down here. Look at yeah. the guys that get... They, nobody can figure out this track. Even the, the locals. What's the brakeman here? Watch your eye. We're going to have to start putting seat belts in these things. <laughs> Look at Gee. that ride. Look at this yeah. is how he gets into that really problem. Really late out of nine. And you don't see this at any bobsled track. I mean, it's yeah. look at the back end of the sled. I mean, the, where do you see the four-man sleds come through there? Remember yeah. the first sled down was perfect. <laughs> look at the yeah. look, look at the frustration here. I know. Czech Republic's Dominic Dvorak came off a 25th place start draw, 12th fastest start in the field from Dvorak and his brakeman Jakub Nosek. And this season he has completely eclipsed his teammate Jan Verba, certainly in the two man. Dvorak lies 22nd in the two man rankings, Verba 29th. Yeah, they get a great start like he's been, and, you know, coming off his sixth place finished in Innsbruck, which is his career best. This is a much better start, 497, and okay, can he get through two? Barely. Four, he was 12th fastest starter in a field of 31 in the first heat. A 497 will probably leave him 6th or 7th fastest Which is what starter. he should have been. He's That's a where good starter. he usually is. That's a good line. Well, when you're, you're not thinking of the start, you're thinking about how do I get through curve two? Yeah. It probably makes you get in a step quicker to concentrate. A uh, little bit of, but no speed there. 
123.9 is 77 miles an hour. Fastest sled we've had he's so down far. Down to 900. 79.2. He's going to be in trouble. Oh, he's got no speed at all. Stolnev's going to pick another one off. It's great to the 100th. He's got so close here. There it is, 200s. Stolnev picked up five spots. Well, Stolnev was 400s of a second behind Tvorjak. That's, well, that's how close that was. He's made up 600s on so Dvorak. There was, he's you mean there were six, sle six sleds separated by 400s? John, from 21st to 8th was 1800s of a second. Wow. <laughs> Watch this skid coming up here. I mean, it's, you know, you're supposed to try and not have any friction. Oh, little brush. Now look at Yes. Now it forces you to the left. Look at the skidding across the eye. Look at the skidding into the curve. Yeah. And the sheets of ice it leaves behind. Leaves Clouds of ice crystals. That's all friction that takes away the speed. Russia's Alexei Stulnev is the race leader with 13 sleds to go. Cody Bascu of 28th start draw with Lou Marais behind him on this US sled. Got himself into 13th spot. Lewis. 506 start, only 21st fastest start. Yeah, Cody's been suffering with the start time blues this year, but boy, that was a good drive down the track. 507 again. Now, he needs to get through curve two to maintain his spot and beat the Russian at the bottom. And he does. Yep. He's, out of nowhere, he manufactured a lot of time on the bottom of the first run, well, coming in the late run, draw. Didn't he down to 12 and on? Oh, but he's 500s to 400s. And still, have, he manufactured a speed down here. Let's see what the kid from Whitehall, New York, can do with some good lines. Yep. Got it up to eight, 128 too. Best speed in that part of the track yet. And that will multiply because he carried the speed so well. Little skid off 13, but no touch on the wall. 14 he uphill had a skid section. In the first Hang it in clean. there. Big speed, 132.2. So 82.8 miles an hour. 50.67. Yeah. That's his two best runs he's had this season back to back. Do you know what? He might be gelling with this track about as well as almost anyone. That run would have left him a hundredth out of eighth place in the first heat. 1,300's better. Yeah, that's a really good effort from Don't Cody Don't love Basque that. These guys will love that. Louis Marek. Absolutely. Marek, Boston guy, bodybuilder. There's still them. It's Cody. The airborne. Three tours of Afghanistan. Skid there, though. This is 13-14. Yeah. So Speed much. on the bottom, though. Look at the difference. Cody Baskew got this place wired up. He's at great speed in the exit of nine, great speed, exit of 13. USA lead with Cody Baskew now in a tie for 11th place. Stephen Holcomb and Justin Cripps. Justin Cripps fresh off a silver medal in the two-man world championships. Stephen Holcomb finished seventh in Koenigsegg three, four weeks ago in the Worlds. No one had better speed in the bottom part of the track than this guy right here, but he crushed the wall out of curve two. If he gets through curve two and puts the same run together, he could move up a number of spots. Yeah, we're gonna expect a Holcomb-S start, which is not gonna be in the money. We had 5.06 in the first heat. 504. Okay, now hold your breath if you want to see him try and get through curve two. Better brush. than the first run. Yeah. And that will give him a chance to keep the speed on board. 600s ahead of teammate Cody Baskew. So we'll have a U.S. sled oh, lead into the, the race. Baskew was, well, of course, Holcomb was afterburners down the bottom part of yeah. the track. But he's got to shoot the chicane at 10 to 11. Oh, little skinny, Seven, little he's tap. way off the pace. I don't know how many times Cody Baskew has beat Holcomb in a World Cup race. He beat him in the U in the trials earlier this season. That is the fastest speed we've seen so far. Boy, Huge big skid, though, but he's still quicker. 134.4. I don't That's know. I don't think it's 5. enough. Not. Not enough by a margin. Holcomb slips three spots, two tenths of a second slower than Cody Baskew on that run. Wow. He was two and he hundreds got, quicker on the first heat. He got through curve two. Not as good as, not as bad as the first heat, yeah. but still. It was though. He had the speed at the bottom. Yeah. And, a big skid on the bottom as he started to come up the hill, throwing it sideways. 
just robbed him of all that momentum. Well, this is not perfect with the back end skinny. He did not get through curve yeah. two again. And then down here, this wasn't what he did in the first run. In the first run, he was absolutely perfect. Well, nine into 10 and 11, and then down to 12, being tricky for everybody for three long weeks. And Holcomb's had enough of it as well. Justin, Justin Cripps and Jesse Lumsden in 11th position after the first heat, tied to the hundredth of a second with Stephen Holcomb. Our current leader is Cody Baskew of the USA. So which North American sled will lead as we get to the final 10 of the season in the red hats? Lyndon Rush. So Todd Hayes behind, who's helping with the coaching as well. These guys only got the 12th best start. This is 499. They should be down in the mid 494, 495. Oh! Delicate steering there. And Cripps didn't get through curve one on the first tee. He did this time, but look how he came down in the middle. I wonder how hard he had to steer to get out of there. Boy, he's got two tenths lead, 99.6. 99.9, he's really high up there in that five, six combination. He was two hundredths in front of Cody Baskew after the first heat. He's now 21 hundredths in front. And, and the gap will capable. go because he Watch. cleans it up in nine to wow. 12. 127 one. That's as good as it gets. It's coming back down a little bit, but ooh. Really high there, uphill, into the finish, should be the leader. Got to keep the speed alive, he's one and a half miles an hour off, and that's where the gap came down. So he just went 21 hundredths better. The Canadians will take that. Didn't know why, they don't know why they're getting that start time though. Those two, they have the second best so far. Best yeah. start was Bruce Tasker, but he should be down. Look at, the, look at the teammates still yeah. humping on each other yeah. in the last probably their 200th trip of the year. In and down. Look at Lumsden's technique with the big arm hooks. But look at the skin he's got going here. That definitely is worth some time. And then down the bottom part of the track, little back end skidding there. E really high into 15. That back end skidding in the exit of 14 caused that entry lateness into 15. But they're the leaders. Justin Cripps leads for Canada with 10 sleds to go in Pyeongchang, the final BMW IBSF two-man World Cup race of the season. Well, a great view of the lights that illuminate this track on the left-hand side and on the right across the top of the roof, you can see the shades that are getting 15, ready to is. be pulled down yeah curve 15 the uphill up straight away steep uphill there's jesse lumsden on the left justin cripps on the right so they have a lead and a top 10 finish was only a hundredth away from them in the first heat that was a good run from cripps 50.57 would have seen him in fifth place after in sixth place after the first heat rather than 11th John, that's what we've seen all week long, what the athletes have been telling us about for the last three weeks. A good run, an intermediate one, a hopeless one, somewhere in the middle. It's just they're zigzagging up and down this track and they can't get consistency out of it yet. Well, it's a lot more consistent than we thought on Wednesday when we saw the, <laughs> how do I say, the uh, frightening lines that we saw in curve 12. Yep. And then we'd stand up in curve two. Wherever we went in curve two or curve 12, there was a crowd of coaches, yep. a crowd of people filming, and everybody <laughs> saying, where are the Koreans? Where are the Koreans? We need somebody to show us how to get through here. Well. And the Koreans only showed up for one heat and two, one heat and four to qualify, and they were left to sort it out amongst themselves. Francesco Friedrich worked it out for himself. He wasn't worrying about what the Koreans were doing, and as a result, he seems to have found his own way yeah but his own way is a rough ride and boy that ride he had in the first run reminded me of the old days of bobsledding yeah. which lff let it fly and uh he did and he was sloppy all the way down the track but fast winning ugly is still winning yeah yeah <laughs> and uh yeah it wasn't a comfortable ride in the back for torsten margis but another gold medal and a crystal globe will help ease those aches 
Pyeongchang career, the Alpensia Sliding Center, the final World Cup race of the season. Ten sleds to go in the two-man bobsled competition. Ugas Alams of Latvia and Yanis Janssens, his teammates, were in tenth place after the first heat. There's Jesse Lumsden on the left, Justin Cripps on the right. Jesse soon to become a proud daddy. Can't wait to get home, I'm sure. What about Ugas Salims? He was only a hundredth ahead of Crips after one of two heats. Well, they drift a little bit out of there. They might have run too far. One, one step, and let's see the exit of two. A little tap, not bad, but still worthy of a loss of time. 99.7 tells me it's pretty good. But he's five to four. Crips wasn't perfect down here. Zalmans was perfect in training like he was right there. 127-2, that's better than Crips. The gap will open up again then. No. Oh, no. To the 100th. 79 miles an hour at the last clock. And now he's, and he's in the behind. red. Maybe he steered too hard to get that perfect out of curve now. Only the fourth fastest time. He won't make it uphill. Chris climbs into the top ten. Well, it's so close in here. Yep. Well, since they arrived in Europe, Cripps's closest run to top 12 was 11th in Koenigsegg before he got fifth finally in Eagles, the last World Cup race. Yeah, he went on he to the to World Korea. Championships and won a silver medal. And, yeah, Something suddenly, about that rule change with the runners yeah. might have helped him. But freed now, up watch, I think sled. one step too far to watch the sled just deviate a little bit to the left. Well, you know, dealing with hundreds of seconds, that has to do something to velocity. And then down here, this is 13. Feathers it off that straightaway, but does he go up and down? High, down low, back up, and watch the sled come off like a top there. See that? And that. Yeah, he kept the there. line low there yeah. deliberately, Too but that steering. caused the skid at the end of the corner. Justin Cripps leads with nine to go. Cripps was four hundredths of a second behind Nico Walter and Kevin Corona of Germany. So this, from ninth place, 21st down to best 21st, was 18 hundredths of a second, covering 12 sleds. And he, that's why this has been such a crazy second heat. This is the worst starter in the second, well, the second worst starter. The worst was Kasanov, then Stolnev, and then this German here, Nico Walter and Kevin Corona. 21st best start. Well, 506, same as Cody Vasquez, same as Stephen Holcomb. And now, this, he had a good run down the track. Look, who steered quietly off the curb when they had a little bit of a back end skid. And he's 900s back. They had 400s in hand. They started 800 slower than Cripps, and that velocity Ooh, is high. still missing. He likes going up on the wood there, right here coming up. There's eight, nine, and how is this line? That's good. Nice speed, 127.5. It's better than Cripps. He, ooh, that tap there, though. Heard that. Didn't Big even hard. see it. That was a hard hit. And 132. 132.7. Third best no speed, but he hits, hits again. That's going to sit him definitely off the lead. Going to lose Fourth three best or four time. places. And he goes behind Cody Baskew, who moves up one. Yeah. And the coaches look up. on. And, but Rips. this is a four-man specialist. He uses the two-man as a little bit of a warm-up. But... Some driving airs there that we don't expect out of Nico Walter. He's got that left hand injury. Yeah. Really affected. He hurt his, his thumb, thumb getting yeah. in the sled on Wednesday. It. And uh, you look at him grab his arm there. Yeah. Look at his head snap there with late exit. And look at him climb now. That's in seven. It gets up near the wood. He's been doing that in every heat we've seen him in practice. Look at this. How close is he to the wood there? Yeah, too high, yeah, too late. Yeah, the head slapping left and right. Exactly, you see too much that pressure. Flop. Canada's Justin Cripps is our race leader. There are eight sleds left in the two-man bobsleigh World Cup season. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching as Germany's Johannes Lochner becomes the latest to try and retain his first heat position. Not many did. There's been a couple of big risers. Justin Cripps was tied 11th. He's now the leader with the eighth-place sled at the run. 
Well, this this young athlete here, second in the world championship, or tied, or he, he tied for the gold medal in the four men. But there was one stage in the season where he won five of the seven races. Yep. He was on a tear. Then he went out, got disqualified in the Eagles four man race after finishing like 16th in the two man. So all of a sudden, something happened to him. 99.9 well, is great speed right there. Then he picked up that really nasty flu thing that he yeah, had all he had the way through flu. the World he Championships. Did. He did. He could Bronchial. barely breathe, never mind concentrate. And those oh, lines there, 127.9. Well, that might be just enough to save him. He's gone from 1600s up to 500s. Still at five. Good speed. He really has that big W there. Gets off of 15. Top speed, 134.7, 83.7 miles an hour. Should put him in the now, lead. Boy, did he fly away at the yeah. bottom, that 134.7. Wow, that they was the big. They nailed it. They came out of curve four. They three nailed three. it, the track system, Carl Rupke says. And I agree yeah. with Carl. 83.7 miles an hour. Only. That was flying. Yeah, that is the fastest of all at the bottom. The track's got more speed than we thought. We thought yeah. we were going to get high 70s. We've already got 83 here. This happened last well, night in the skeleton as well. This happens a lot. This has a lot to do with your speed. Yep. When you come this straight, then 13 here. Ooh, a little bit of a back end. The, the, but he comes up and down here too much. When you yep. go below that yellow sign. Bobbled along the wall. And yeah. That just too much steering. Yep. <laughs> They're happy with their start. 494. Seven sleds to go from Nick Polignato of Canada and Lascelles Brown to second place. Just on, 16 hundredths of a second. That's close. That's ridiculous. Close enough for you? We're liking it. As if this is just a warm-up for the games. I predicted there'd be no ties. It wouldn't be close because there's such a variance of times we saw in training. I was wrong. What we have had is maybe some unusual names producing good runs. Well... We've seen it already in the women's skeleton and women's bob. People have never won medals before or won bronze medals. At least recently for Canada. Yeah, what a day for Canadian women. Nick Polignato, six hundredths of a second up. And this is... He's doing what he did in Koenigsen. Holding his lead and doubling it over wow. Johannes Lochner. It was only six hundredths from the first heat. Came out with a fifth. He never finished in a top ten before. Finished fifth at the World Championships. 125.5. That speed's suspect, though. 78 miles an hour. Top speed was 80 miles it's coming an hour. Down. The gap's come down. Got to keep it clean. Oh, skin skid. there, too. Uphill taps. He's going to lose ground. Should be enough. Right, you know, single digits. No, he lost it on the bottom. Yeah. The speed. See, he could not match the Lochner's speed yeah. on the bottom. Two. Two miles an hour and two tenths of a second vanished down at the bottom there. He was two kilometers down at the exit of curve nine. That was the telltale sign, even though he's up 20 hundreds. And then he made a couple more mistakes. But to lose, but still great finish for Nick Polinato. Yeah. I mean, this is a great season for him. And these lines here, well, you can see it's not a straightaway, bend away. Oof. Oh, real big air here. Wow. Real That's big air sensational. here. Sensational. From the back. Oof. Big hard hit there. That's where the speed went right there. All yeah. oh, four runners. That might be the best air that we've seen so far. That was back for takeoff, that was, wasn't it? Wow. Johannes Nockler leads with six sleds remaining in the two-man bobsleigh World Cup season. Martin Haven and John Morgan trackside at the Alpensia Sliding Center in Pyeongchang, Korea, the 2018 Winter Olympic venue. So Oscars Malbaris, Yanis Stranger lying in sixth position. Best result of the season for him in a two-man was a silver medal in the last World Cup race in Eagles. Other than that, he's had three six places in the last four outings. Well, he was the first guy down in the competition. I don't know if that was an advantage. Start 92 in the first run, 92 in the second run. He didn't get through the curve. Yeah, he did get through curve two. Okay, let's see what he does here. No, I jinxed him. Yep. Now it's trouble. He's going to have a hard time maintaining this green number. Well, his lead over Johannes Lochner from the first heat was seven hundredths of a second. Down to three. And 
Unless he's hyper clean here, that will vanish into the red, and he's not. He hits everything. 126.6 is not the speed he wants. No. Down to one, he's going to continue to fall. He might drop behind Polignato at this stage. At the moment, on the split times, he's dropped five places. Wow. He's having a horrible best run. speed for... Yeah, and we're the best that. of the sport. 14th best time. That tells you what Curve 2 can do to you. Well, it doesn't matter who you are. It's that horrible landing out of 12 into 12 as well that takes so I much energy. I don't think that costs you as much time because you're going 60, 70 miles an hour there. Curve 2, you make a mistake, it's over. Out of 9, he was still 100th up, and he ends up 4 tenths back. Horrible, well, He's got horrible. a love-hate relationship with the track. He says it's tricky, it's challenging. And he hasn't figured it out yet. And this is one of the best there is. There ain't much love going on between him and this track at the moment, that's for sure. Look at that. She's the break. And doesn't even land straight, straight, lands sideways. Talk about a way to slow a sled down. Carlo Valdez frustration, there offering his frustration, frustration. Yeah, sympathies. Five to go, Johannes Lochner, the leader. How close will he get to the medals? Justin Olsen, Evan Weinstock from the USA tied the start record in the first heat with a fifth fastest run that looked like it could be second until the final couple of corners. Track record at the start from these two Americans. Could they break it again? They might need to if they want a medal. Ooh, little drift they track record again. Break wow. it again. What a breakout season for get Justin. Start record, but he taps out of two, which is going to erase everything. Now, whether he can get to the bottom, hold the spot. Don't he forget. a real rough ride down the track. Don't Ooh, forget that's how late. rough our leader, Francesco Friedrich, treated this track, and it still rewarded him with speed. Well, Francesco Friedrich's got oh, four world championships. That. He nailed it this time. Oh, 27-1. 2100 up. A mile an hour down on top speed, though, so oh, the he's gap losing comes it back. down. Now it's going to get dicey. Going to get close down here. 11th best oh, speed. And this is going to go right touch. to the 100th. The foot of the hill. He hits the wall. No. And he's back. Sixth wow. best time. It's okay. Still. Still, he's going to be no worse than eighth. But Lochner look has at the, the lead. Look at how puzzled the drivers are. Start record, it's okay. They're coming out of here knowing that they're the best athletes in the field at the start. Yeah. What a way to look forward to next year's Olympic Games to have the best starting team be from the United States. And here, Exeter Curve 2. Well, you saw Mel Bardis do it. He's one of the most experienced drivers in the field, and Olsen did it too. Yeah. Wasn't as bad a hit as Mel Bardis, who really And this is the uphill the section yeah. where no mistakes allowed there. That's worth a tenth minimum. Still. Jesse Great. Lumsden, Johannes Lockner off of there, congratulations. Great season from Justin Olsen, really stepping up here in the World Cup. Four sleds to go, time to decide the medals. Chris Spring, wow, what a story this would be to round out what's been a pretty low season for the Springer. Even in the World Championships when his teammates went second and fifth, he was struggling in the teens. He finished the first heat six hundredths of a second out of a medal. Well, the Springer was fast all the way down the track. He just did everything right. Perfect lines, 496, seventh best start. Okay, and hold your breath. Let's see if he can get out of two. Barely. Just squeaks out. Teammate Alicia Rissling claimed her first ever World Cup medal a couple of hours ago. Bronze for Canada. Wasn't the Canadian we expected to be in the medal stand. Beat her teammate Kaylee Humphreys by two spots. Whoa, really High late. wide and handsome for he Chris He did that Spring. in the first run, though. Has he got any speed after that? Skinny. Ooh, he's got to watch Still out. Still 1400s in the lead. 127 ones, decent, well, but he's got to watch out here. Out of down to seven, I don't know. Too many skids. 131, no, no, no. best speed. He's going to fall back at least one, Lockner's maybe behind his teammate. Oh, oh, he falls by spots. Nick Polinato and by behind <laughs> Olsen. <laughs> Nick Polinato, the best Canadian out here again today. Yeah. Springer didn't have the same run he had in the first team. But that's this track. Yeah. You can, 
Next year, there's four heats of that's, this. That's his track, and that's his season. You know, every time there's a glimmer of hope, something comes along to extinguish it. There's no lets here in this sport, like in tennis. Look how high he gets there, and then he comes down, he has to go back up onto the wood. Yeah. That's on the wood. There's no speed up there. Watch this. He hits that little... He did that in the first run, too. Yeah. Then oh, here, the then here, look at this. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. Oh. You can't tell me that doesn't put a lot of pressure on the brake. Well, they always say any good landing is one you can walk He's away right. from, but that didn't look that good. Three stages to go in the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup season. In the medals after the first of two heats here in Korea, Oscars Kibermanis and Mattis Miknis. There's your leaders on the left, Johannes Lochner. On the right, Joshua Bloom. Are they going to take a medal? Well, I got to think these guys are going to say something about it. 490 in the first run. They could go 488 here. There it is. And now let's see him get out of curve two, and he'll have a huge lead. And he did a little tap. Wasn't a little tap either. We heard the hit. 2700 is probably going to come back to us a little bit here. He was two tenths in front of Lochner exactly after the first heat. He's three tenths up now. I can't believe he's going to lose three tenths on the bottom part of this track. This is for the medals. <laughs> but don't that let me say anything. That is the curse of the commentator. 3400. There's not a lot of speed there. He's clobbering no. down in speed. And it's, hitting it's coming things. back at us, but he's going to have enough here. He should have. So 2700 up will be in the medals. He's going to finish off a great season where he won his first ever medals, and this is going to be another one. A third bronze Only medal this season. Yeah. 3700. He was up on the exit of night. This track. <laughs> <laughs> There's no safe in this yeah. track. 13, There's no safe lead. 13 to the line can shoot you down in flames. Hey, look at the frustration. Get yeah. down the oh, I have to go to more. Look at the frustration. Yeah. Well, so he won a medal. Look at and yeah. unhappy he is with himself. He won a medal. Curve two. Okay, that's the first little mistake. How's the skidding doing down here? Ooh, he's got some air. So he got some big air. And the reason he's unhappy is he was only 200 behind silver. silver. Yeah, that little. That's how he took the medal away from Johannes Lochner. Listen to that. You can hear the crowd at the top and at the finish area cheering for Yun Jung Won and Yung Wo Seo of Korea. A lot of pressure on him. We've seen him win World Cup events last year. We saw him win the World Cup title in 2015-16, 2017, 16-17. It's been a different story. Yep. Very. <laughs> well, the start, well, 494, fifth best start. They got to do better than that. They've been, last year, ooh, they got in the late, 495. And he's 500s back, eighth best velocity. That was that little jiggle coming out of the start groups. One medal this season in the two man. That was bronze in Whistler. Oh, this, he's got to find the perfect line now. He's been down the track twice as much as anybody. He's lost 10 hundreds now. Keeper Mattis was not smooth down here. He only had 126 eight speed. Let's see what Juan can have. Oh, 126 five. That's not great speed. Not only could he find, fall back by Keeper Mattis, he could fall back. Well, he's behind. closing the gap a little, but Lochner was only 400 behind. speed here on the bottom. This will be devastating if he doesn't. He's going to be out of the medals. He is wow. going to be out of the medals. Lochner wow. is back in, and Keeper Mattis will get the silver that he had hoped for. Look at the frustration in Eric Allard. All the strategy the Koreans did, they didn't compete in the four man of the world championships. They sent the team home. They've been in a free fall since they lost their coach, Malcolm yep. Lloyd, a year ago, January. Well, his wife, Look Jeannie, the, is here the presenting the trophies. Frustration. This is out of 13. Does he go high, low? Look at the difference in speed. Keeper. He had great speed down here, so that's perplexing. Yeah. But then he rubs it all off on the wall. Oh. Oh, Yikes, oh. out of the medals. Fourth oh. place with the final sled still to come. Can Kiba Manis 
even dare to think that Friedrich is going to drop normally, the ball here. Normally, I say this yeah. is a shark circle of the water with a little blood, but this track might have something to say with that, and he is rough rides. He's had rough rides in every heat of training, and that first heat was no picture perfect either, but he's just fast. Start well, track to record. Marcus behind. I they knew wanted to they start record back, back from of Justin Olsen. They were going Let's see if he can get out of here. Oh, that's a skid. Oh, he's such a, it's such a noisy trip from his sled. He hits he's, everything. 100.2 is excellent. But remember, 3700s went away to four for Keeper Mattis. Now it's the 2300s lead. And Keeper Mattis was not smooth down here, so there's a lot of time in the bank here. Keeper Manis is not even drawing breath yeah, 23, right now. 28-2. That's the best speed we've seen in the last 10 sleds. He was only 2,200s ahead of Keeper Manis from the first heat. Okay. He's barely any quicker. Okay, the four-time world champion. But it's enough. He's going to win another World Cup title. It is going to be is... his fifth World Cup win of the season as he claims victory by three tenths of a second. Okay. Oscar's Keeper Manis takes a career best silver medal in the two-man competition to add to the two bronzes he won earlier in the season five and countries in the first six though wow johannes lochner takes the bronze start Nick fourth and yun jung won collapses to fifth justin olsen rounds out the top half dozen well they knew the americans who broke the start record the number one rated decathlete in the back torsten marcus said to francisco friedrich we want the start record here when we leave yeah and they just posted it the start record look at them get in the technique and then the drive down the track that it's not how to do it but you know sometimes the roughest rides are the fastest rides he said two rough rides and they've both been the fastest Set a track record in the first heat with a 50.24. That was 3,400 slower, but enough to win it by three tenths. Oscars Kiba Manis, a career high silver medal. Johannes Lochner takes the bronze. Nick Polignato, the best of the Canadians, in fourth position. Cody Basque rounds out the top 10 ahead of Nico Valter and Oscars Melbardis. Some stellar names way down in the teams. Stulnev, Holcomb, we haven't even got down to Kazianov and Hef yet the track yeah what a the, race the track sort of has changed the persona of who is who and both korean sleds tumbled down the order in that second heat one ended up 21st last how in about, that second run how about the wow. germans coming what we come from eighth to yep. third so francesco Friedrich and torsten margis claim their fifth two-man win of the season sixth if you include the world championships and of course we do but fifth in the world cup and with that goes without any hesitation the two-man crystal globe to the standout two-man driver again of this season well he just keeps going up that career board and <laughs> Only three men have won a two-man race this season. Holcomb won in Lake Placid, and there was a pair of wins for Johannes Locker and Samaritz and Koenigsegg. But other than that, it has been all about chasing Francesco Friedrich and not chasing him down. The four-time two-man world champion is now a Crystal Globe winner as we round out the two-man season here in Korea. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget, we'll be back in November, starting our run into the games. From John Morgan and the TV crew here, I'm Martin Haven saying we'll see you for the four-man on Sunday. Until then, it's goodbye.